Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee at the lunchtime hour, and hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. Beautiful weather here up in the northeast and mid-Atlantic states, in fact, practically up and down the entire eastern seaboard. Uh, but we've got stuff going on, and uh, that involves a new tropical depression that has formed in the southwestern Caribbean. Uh, the uh, satellite loops this morning show uh, a fairly well-defined low-level circulation, and the conditions are favorable for strengthening, and I think this could very well become a tropical storm, if not today, uh, maybe later tonight or on, on uh, Thursday, as it's going to be on a general northwest to northerly track. Uh, eventually, I think this is going to wind up in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, and I also think that this is all going to be uh, an issue uh, for the uh, eastern Gulf Coast, the Florida Panhandle, uh, maybe back to about uh, Alabama, the Alabama coast. But that's a long ways away and would not be at all surprised if this thing winds up eventually becoming a hurricane. Although we seem to have gotten used to everything being either a Category 4 or a Category 5. I don't think that there's going, this is going to get to that. Uh, there's a lot of other things going on in the atmosphere, including uh, some uh, disturbed weather that's uh, east of Florida and some strong winds aloft that are present there at this moment. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, if, how that impacts all of this, but it looks like the tropical system is going to stay as a very distinct entity. So why don't we take a look at that? and uh, show you uh, what uh, what's on, on the satellite loops and a look at the NAM model. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll take any of your questions. So just hang on, hang on, be right there. We have the season 16th tropical depression that has developed uh, this morning. The Hurricane Center has just designated this tropical depression 16 based on the satellite loops that we're looking at. And an Air Force plane is going to be investigating this uh, this afternoon, and we'll see if it has <clears throat> attained tropical storm status. The next name on the list is Nate. Uh, one of the things that uh, we can see from the loop is that there's very little wind shear going on. Clouds are rotating around what appears to be a circulation center. Uh, if, if I had to guess off the visible, it's somewhere up in there, and there are some curved bands of uh, convection that are rotating around it. So uh, the only thing that may inhibit some intensification to a degree is the fact that it is uh, its proximity to land. Uh, where there's Central America, Nicaragua, Honduras, and <clears throat> also the fact that this is part of a, a large gyre of tropical moisture that extends down into the Pacific. You can see on the Pacific side, there's quite a bit of uh, cl cloud cover there and convection. And on the wider view, uh, you can also pick it out quite well. Also complicating matters just a little bit is we have this area of disturbed weather that's sitting uh, in the southwestern Bahamas. It's been bringing some rains to Florida over the last uh, several days. Uh, this is non-tropical in nature at the moment, and I think it probably will remain that way. But um, we've got uh, strong upper level winds here uh, that are preventing this from developing into a tropical system. What may eventually happen out of this is that you might get some kind of a low, a, a surface low that may try and form, uh, but I, I really think that that's going to be minor as it you know moves up toward the northwest. Uh, this is the area, of course, that we're going to be concerned about as it uh, takes a track uh, somewhere uh, across the northwestern Caribbean and eventually finds its way up into uh, the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, when we look at the uh, hurricane set models, the hurricane tracking models, uh, they're all uh, pretty much uh, showing uh, this moving into the central or eastern Gulf. The models have actually shifted to the east. Uh, the European model probably is best represented by the track in the uh, this brownish line, the farther east track. I'm not sure exactly what model that is of the uh, hurricane tracking models, but the European was very close to this idea of taking it uh, close to the uh, western tip of Cuba and then into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and eventually into the Florida Panhandle uh, sometime uh, late Sunday or Sunday night. Uh, at least that is the, uh, the plan of attack at the moment. So uh, we do have the new NAM out and we can take a look at the new NAM. 
courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. Thank you, Levi Cowan, as always, for your wonderful work and for letting us share it. Um, so here, we, we don't have tropical views of the NAM because it's basically just the, the United States uh, down to about uh, just a little bit north of 20 degrees north. So, but as we move it along, you can see that that low that you see there is part of that disturbed weather that's sitting off the, the, the Bahamas. That's not the tropical system. That's going to burst onto the scene here uh, later Friday after, afternoon. You see it come out into uh, the Gulf of Mexico and turns it eventually going north and northeastward. Uh, it does bring the pressures down low enough that the NAB would certainly suggest that this could reach minimal hurricane status. And indeed, uh, the Hurricane Center is forecasting uh, that to uh, happen in their um, in their official forecast. Now, let me just show you what's going on in the upper air, uh, because you do have uh, this ridge in the east that begins to flatten out a bit. Uh, the jet uh, stream is running across the Great Lakes and into New England. We have a trough that's uh, coming out of the plains, and uh, there's a bit of a ridge off just east of the Bahamas there that's steering uh, this system northward and you can see it here now the, another trough approaches that comes out of the plains uh, pulls it up and the ridge off the east coast weakens and that causes this to turn eventually uh, toward the northeast uh, so do, to do something like this I think this could potentially be a, a, a significant rainmaker uh, for uh, the mid-Atlantic states and maybe on up even into southern New England uh, next week uh, as this moves northeastward, provided that uh, the model is correct in this idea of it being a bit more to the east rather than to the west. you, you got to get them to go up the east side of the Appalachians in order to uh, produce a, a, a substantial rainfall here. And uh, the rainfall, uh, I say substantial because of the fact that it, it would be, it's been bone dry. Uh, for the last month plus in some areas. Some sp spots haven't even seen a drop of rain. So uh, this does have the potential for at least uh, alleviating some of the dry conditions. We're not in any kind of drought at this point again, but um, certainly it has been dry from, um, for the most part from late August into this first part of October. So this might have give us an opportunity uh, to break that uh, dry spell. So um, we will, uh, of course, check with uh, w as the weather models come in this afternoon, and uh, we will update you on this uh, this evening. Uh, I'm going to stop it right here and uh, take some of your questions, so just uh, hang on one second. I'm back. Just got to shut the audio off. Okay. So here's the thing at, at this point. I, I want to see what kind of a system we're actually going to be dealing with. Is it going to be small? Is it going to be large uh, in terms of its geographic size? Um, not quite sure yet, you know, in terms of the overall track. I just looked at the new GFS. And, you know, it keeps wanting to take this thing pretty far to the left. It actually takes it inland west of New Orleans on this particular run. Uh, one of the primary differences between the GFS and the European is the ridge in the east. On the GFS, uh, it starts to build a big ridge in the east strongly beginning on Sunday. So um, I don't know if that's correct or not. Certainly, when you see the pattern that we've been in with this tendency for ridges to pop up in the east, that you can't discount it. Um, the European says otherwise, and right now I'm kind of feeling that that this is going to fall on the eastern side of the envelope of tracks, and the fact that the hurricane tracking models kind of shifted to the east leads me to believe that that is the case. Now, with respect to any rain out of this for uh, the mid-Atlantic states and the northeast, I think that's going to depend on whether this goes up the east side or the west side of the Appalachians. And uh, if it goes up the east side of the Appalachians, it could be a pretty decent widespread rainfall, which we desperately need. Uh, if it goes west of the Appalachians, it's going to narrow its scope and keep most of the rain inland. 
So that's an issue uh, that we're going to deal with over the next couple of days and trying to figure that part of the equation out. So why don't we just before you know we start kind of getting wrapped around with specific questions regarding this. Um, what we do know uh, for the most part is that this thing's going to move to the north, northwest, and then north. It's going to wind up somewhere in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. Where it goes from there, uh, I would say the odds favor this going um, east of 85 degrees west. That's my opinion at this point. Uh, and that would say, you know, maybe from the Alabama coast and the Florida panhandle eastward. I'm, I'm not buying that 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 westward track, particularly with what what's going on in the western part of the United States. But you know what? We've, we've been surprised before with this sort of stuff. Uh, Doug Crum wants to know, the GFS, Euro, and NAM, which model has performed better in overall guidance? They've all had their moments of victories. Um, I think the European has probably done a bit better. Uh, not a lot better, but a bit better, in my, in my opinion. Um, but, you know... It depends on, you know, we've had different circumstances with, with, with these. And, and in some instances, the European worked better than the GFS. And then there were a couple of times where the GFS kind of worked better. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that since we're still kind of in the long range-ish range uh, view here, I would rather use the European's view than, than, than the other models. And certainly um, the Canadian was not, was not put in your list of, of, of models there, and uh, rightfully so. Uh, the NAM has not been that good. The NAM has, uh, you know, for a lot of these things, just has been having a real tough time with them for some reason, uh, being way too far east and then shifting west uh, at the wrong times. So I, I, I kind of look at the NAM with a little bit of skepticism um, at this stage. Let's see. Uh, Cynthia, how far east is your cone of possibility reach? Is an east coast rider even possible? I, I think that this is going to be, you know, it goes inland, you know, when it does, goes inland, it, it's a question of whether it goes up the east side of the mountains or the west. I don't think this is going to be something that's going to hug the coast all the way up or just offshore. I don't think it'll be that far east. Um, <clears throat> it'll be, uh, you know, somewhere, you know, on land all the way up. And we've got this upper trough that will be swinging eastward, so it might interact with that. That might enhance the rainfall uh, <clears throat> as it makes a transition over to an extra tropical low. Or in post tropical low, so we'll have to watch to see what that does. But you know, the, it is going to just keep on moving. So it's not as if it's going to come up and just kind of sit there for a while. It's just going to keep on moving to the northeast. I think once it gets there, um, uh, she gadget. We had the remnants of Maria and Leo over the past weekend in the UK. Is the jet stream in a normal position over Europe this year? Very rainy summer. You know what? Um, I, I I she gadget. I I have not. Uh, I have to take a closer look at that. So, you know, I'll, I'll try and do that and, and uh, address it the next time I see you on here. OK, uh, but, um, you know, I, I don't you know, one of the things when we're forecasting here, you know, on the short term scale, we kind of stay home, you know, pretty much in terms of our view. So we don't always look uh, out that far unless there's something, you know, moving along, maybe some kind of big storm out in the Atlantic that's heading for Europe that catches our attention or if it's part of you know what's happening with the long range for us but i will i will take a look okay so um here's the deal for the rest of the day folks um let me just finish this comment um i will uh live stream tonight to probably around six o'clock or a little bit after six o'clock if that works um depending on uh you know, what happens to me at, at work. Um, yeah, Cynthia, this will be a good thing for Central PA. There will be so somebody's going to get some decent rain out of this. It's a question of whether it goes west or east of the mountains and, and where the, you know, who falls into that uh, in, into that zone. But I, I think it, somebody's going to get a much needed rain because it's been so bone dry. Uh, oh, thank you, Marlene. I appreciate it. I try and fear mongering is, is just, I don't, I just don't do that. Uh, and you've been here since the 200th subscriber. I'm almost to 4,500. It's so cool. The growth has been phenomenal this year. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Freddie Lake saying good afternoon from Northwest Georgia. You have a great day too. And Tom L., good to see you as well. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to live stream tonight, figure around 6 o'clock or so, and we'll take a look at what the afternoon models did with all this and see what the um, uh, Air Force Reconnaissance Aircraft finds when it gets in there. And uh, in the meantime... Everybody go out and enjoy the beautiful weather if it happens to be beautiful where you are. By the way, I did notice the fact that on the uh, GFS anyway, that 
has a pretty good snowfall um, early next week for parts of the northern Rockies. So if uh, I remember, we will look at that. Uh, we will look at that uh, later today. Um, there are, as far as other threats are concerned, because I heard, saw that question being addressed down the road. Um, we said after we get this brief break that. You know, we'd probably see a few more fire up. So this one will be one of those few. And we'll probably see a couple of more between now and uh, the end of November. So the hurricane season certainly is not done yet, not by a long shot. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We will uh, we'll see you tonight again right around 6 o'clock or so. And we'll take a look at what's happening. We might have Tropical Storm Nate by then. And we'll have the afternoon run of the European, which will be great. So this way uh, we can see what it's doing. One of the things with the European today, by the uh, the last several runs, it's been very consistent with where it wants to take this. It really hasn't varied very much at all. So um, th that's kind of a sign of confidence for me. So unless it suddenly does a big westward shift um, to look like the GFS, I I'm thinking the European may have the better idea here. All right, folks, have a great day. Uh, Leon, good to see you on here as, uh, as well. And uh, we will uh, talk to you soon.